Okay, well, um, the chair recognizes the gentlelady from California. Ms. Caps for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and uh, also Chairman Dingell. Um, it's because of the two of you, le your leadership, uh, that we're having this hearing uh, today and this issue comes before this committee. And I'm going to be brief in my opening remarks. I've been preceded by two important members, women members from California, and there's yet another one to speak. <laughs> so um, I, can, uh, I can be one in the line of, um, of speakers here. But this hearing does provide us all an excellent opportunity to make, to examine uh, the, uh, some important issues and choices we'll have to make in the transition from analog to digital television. It highlights also our responsibility to stay true to the principle and spirit of localism that is currently captured in our telecommunication laws. I understand that advances in technology allow us to do more with less space, but I also uh, um, caution that this should not come at the expense or cost of our public educational and government channels and local voices. It shouldn't have to come also at the co cost of the quality and accessibility of PEG channels to all of our constituents. Um, growing media consolidation already threatens to crowd out local content. This is, I believe, uh, a, 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 a perennial a threat, and that's why we should be involved so that we can speak for uh, some of the, our local groups who have very few voices besides our, ours to represent them. We have to continue to do what, what we need to do to ensure that this, uh, this consolidation doesn't happen again. And uh, um, I want to also echo and, and, and thankful for uh, our, our colleague, Jane Harmon, who every time she has a chance speaks to the issue of, of what we need to provide for first responders. And uh, every time there's an opportunity to discuss the spectrum, then we should keep that in mind. And they also uh, don't have a lot of powerful voices on their side, except for for those of us here who remember 9-11 so clearly and uh, the interoperability or the operability that we want to provide for our first responders. And so thank you again, Mr. Markey. I yield back. You were looking forward to the expert testimony that we are about to hear. The gentlelady, time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gonzalez. Wave opening, Mr. Chair. Chair recognizes the <laughs> gentlelady from California, Ms. Solis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to applaud you and the ranking member for having this important hearing. Um, so much has already been said about the need to continue to provide this very vital service. Uh, PEG uh, channels are, play a really important role in communities like mine. We just met with some of our local uh, cable uh, folks and heard a great deal about the educational benefits that we see in areas like East Los Angeles, where not everyone has the luxury of having uh, the Internet uh, at home and, and vice versa. So it's a very important uh, part of what I think our committee can do to help oversee this, that we see that this support uh, is there and that we continue this very vital service. Thank you, and I yield back. Great. General Lady's time has expired. The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to have my full statement placed into the record in following my colleague from uh, California uh, in our district in Houston. There are a lot of programming on our uh, public education and uh, governmental services that just wouldn't be available uh, to our communities without it. And that's why I uh, look forward to the hearing, and hopefully we'll see the continuation, if not an expansion, uh, particularly as we head into the uh, all-digital effort that we're doing. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I ask my full statement to be in the record. Without objection, it will be included.